Hi folks, welcome to Coffee and Colossians on Monday. Um, it's, I'm in a very, very beautiful setting. However, I'm being eaten alive by midges, so I better get a lot on with this. Let me just put my cup down. It is, though, just a gorgeous setting back down at the duck pond. Now, we're going to look at something that I, I think is so important and so relevant to our current church context. And I think it identifies, I think, a major problem in many evangelical churches in Scotland, in Australia, in the US and elsewhere. And it's something that I battle against and sometimes I think I'm fighting a losing battle. What, what do I mean? Let's, let's go to this. We'll go to the verse. Uh, Colossians 3.17. So we've talked about the peace of Christ and the word dwelling in us. Um, we've really got basic principles of Christian living. The peace of Christ in relationships. And this idea of the word of Christ dwelling in us. And now this third principle. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, actually, I'm going to take three mornings to look at this one verse because I regard it as so vital and so essential and so central to living the Christian life. So we're going to consider, first of all, this whatever. Now, I think that much of the evangelical church is in enormous danger of legalism. And, and it's a subtle kind of legalism. It's not the legalism of, you know, don't go to the cinema or don't drink alcohol or, you know, you must uh, attend these services. It's a, it's a different, it's what I would call a programmatic legalism. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, this whatever is, is the antithesis of that. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, codes of rules are for the immature. There is a, a relationship that children have and there is a relationship that adults have. If... Uh, I go home just now and my wife is saying, now make sure you wipe your feet, um, make sure you sit up straight at the table, uh, you know, uh, go up and brush your teeth. This is not a healthy adult relationship. It's what you would do with children. And one of the problems with a religion, which is based upon rules, even if they are called principles, is that it treats us like objects or like children. And another problem is this, that rules are easy to get around. It's why governments make more rules. It's, it's why in, say, in Presbyterianism, Presbyterianism is, I think, a great system of church government because I think it's the biblical system. But <laughs> unless people get the principles right, it becomes disastrous. And Unfortunately, Presbyterianism is just absolutely brilliant for people who want to make up rules all the time. And not just, that's Presbyterianism in its kind of written rules, but there are other churches. There's kind of unwritten rules as well. There's, you've got to fit in with this program. You've got to be this type of person. You've got to teach in this particular way. And I think it's missing what's being said here, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, rules are easy to get around. You can, if you have a tick box religion, you can tick the boxes and still not have your heart right with God. Here, we're told three things about whatever we do. In word, we why would, if, if we love Jesus, then yes, of course, we're going to think about what we say, but nobody, you're not going to speak poison 
out of your love for Christ. Again, indeed. You know, what this means is, it's not just there are certain bits that you do that are the religious bits, that are the witnessing bits, and so on. But whatever you do. So I, here I am, I'm recording this. I'm doing it in the name of, of Jesus. But it means reading a book. It means going to a film. It means listening to music. It means helping somebody. It means politics. It means everything. Everything. You do everything for Christ. There are not some things that you do for Christ and other things that you don't do for Christ. And then in verse 23, we'll, we'll go on to this because we'll, we will come to it at some point. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So it's, it's a question of the heart. It's not a question of programs. It's not a question of rules. It's not a question of, well, this doesn't fit in with our particular bureaucracy, so therefore we cannot do this. It's whatever you do, do it for the Lord and do it with all your heart. Do it in the name of Christ. Now, my time is gone, so I'm going to think, reflect tomorrow more on what it means to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. But and, let me finish with this in Acts 22. Acts 22 and verse 10. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. That's Paul speaking on the road to Damascus. What shall I do, Lord? He asked the Lord, what shall I do? And I'm going to do it for you. I'm so tired of programs. I'm tired of people. <laughs> you know, you go into a bookstore and there's loads of stuff telling you how to do things. And I think we've forgotten this most basic of all principles. In fact, we would say it, but it's put to the background. Am I doing this for the Lord? And it's a great challenge to me to think about that. Um, but maybe our churches need to think about that a lot more. Uh, and maybe that principle needs to be at the forefront of our Christian lives. Otherwise, we fall into this subtle and sometimes not so subtle form of legalism and legalese. So God bless you. Uh, tomorrow. Not sure where I'll be, but uh, I hope you have a great day and join me tomorrow for coffee and Colossians. Bye. Mm -hmm.